Is it an idea or is it actually enough to write a whole book about? That's a question lots of writers struggle with because they have a lot of ideas. I used to keep them all in these file folders and I'd have like three or four really stuffed folders in my filing cabinet that I actually never went back to and looked at. So they just kind of took up space. To figure that out, I've got a few questions that you can ask yourself as you're in the planning stages. And that way you can figure out if you have enough material for a book or if you don't, how to expand that idea and make it big enough to make a whole novel. But first, don't forget to hit subscribe because we have lots of great writing videos on here. We have live streams, we have classes, we have all kinds of things. The first question you should ask yourself about an idea is, are the stakes high enough? Meaning, is this going to be life or death? Is this going to be a really important thing to the character? For instance, just making the varsity basketball team may not be a very big deal, which means the stakes aren't high enough, which means you don't have enough to write a whole book about. But a man trying to find his missing son, well, that has really big stakes. It means a lot to him. And so that is going to take up the whole novel. It's going to have a lot of steps involved in it. Kind of look at how many steps are involved in accomplishing this goal that they have for the novel. Or making the varsity basketball team, for instance, there's only a few, right? Practice, go to the tryouts and, and have the coach decide if you made it or not. Finding a missing child, though, has a whole lot of steps. You've got to retrace where the kid was, interview some witnesses, figure out who could have possibly taken him, track down that person. There's a lot of things at stake. So when you look at the idea that you have, ask yourself, does it have a lot of steps and does it matter enough to the character and to the reader? Secondly, are you doing a new twist on an old thing? There's plenty of hooks in what is called tropes out there for books, regardless of genre. They have a lot of the same kind of little hooks to them. It can be fish out of water, opposites attract, friends to lovers, a city person going to the country. There's a lot of tropes that you see redone a lot in movies and in books. But is your idea going to be a slight twist on that? Is it going to be something a little bit different than what everybody else has done? If it isn't, then I suggest you come up with six other ideas based on that one idea. How else can you twist it and make it different? When you're coming up with six, it makes your brain work a little bit harder. I have other videos where I talk about this rule of six that I kind of abide by. Really, it's all about getting your mind to think in bigger terms. Is your market big enough? If you're writing a book that's only going to appeal to a really tiny subset of the world, it's going to be really hard to sell that book and to have it be discovered among the 19 million other books on Amazon. If you're writing about the journey of the walking catfish, and there really is such a thing, <laughs> there's really not a lot of people that care about fish that walk across the road, nor is there enough story there to talk about it. Is it global enough? Meaning, does that really appeal to everybody in terms of what they're thinking about emotionally? I've said it in a thousand times in my videos, what connects readers to your book, what makes readers talk about your book, and what makes them read the next one is emotion. Emotion connects us. And emotion is found in all of those commonalities that we all have. You can write a story about anything, about World War II or about a mouse lost in the city. We all have those same common core insecurities and fears and anxieties that those characters can have. Like the mouse lost in the city, maybe he's really missing his family. People can not maybe not relate to a mouse, but they can relate to the feeling of missing your family. The guy in the war, maybe none of us that are reading the book have served in a war, but we can relate to that feeling of despair and loss and fear. Hit on those core emotions and themes that everybody can relate to. If you're having trouble coming up with some of those, you can Google like the top five things that people worry about or kind of look at the books on your shelf and see what the common element is there. Once you narrow that down, you can make your idea fit a more global audience, a broader swath of people. Because the more people you have out there as potential readers, the more people you can sell that book to. Is it something you actually want to write? A lot of people try to kind of chase trends. They're like, oh, vampires are the new hot thing or books with magic are the new hot thing. And so they write that, but they're not happy with it. One of the best pieces of advice I got early in my career was make sure you like writing a hundred of this type of book because if readers really love it, you just might. So imagine if Colleen Hoover did not like writing suspense at all. She would be really stuck for a long career of writing the same thing and not enjoying it. You need to enjoy the book because that will show on the page. And have you created characters that really want to work within this idea? Sometimes you'll come up with a great idea. Let's say a kidnapped child. And maybe the character you come up with is a serial killer. Maybe the reader's not going to sympathize with a serial killer trying to find his kidnapped child. It's possible to pull it off. You can make almost anything believable in a book as long as the motivation is strong enough. But I wouldn't recommend, particularly that this is one of your first books or you're very early in your career, trying something totally out of the box. It can be really hard to pull off and really hard to get the traction that you need in the marketplace. And finally, are you really, really, really excited about this idea? Are you chomping at the bit to start writing it? Even though you know the journey ahead will probably be difficult and there will be days when you have no idea what to write on the page, you are excited about the book and you 
you care about it and you can't wait to put these characters in this situation that will show in your writing and it will help you a lot in having the enthusiasm and the motivation to keep writing. On my channel I have a lot of videos about motivation and insecurity and self-doubt and all of that because we all deal with it. I do. Everybody does. If you have an idea that you're super excited about go ahead and try it as a book. If you're struggling and it's not becoming a book and it's just not taking shape go back and watch the plotting videos or the character development videos and download any of the free handouts that we have. That material can give you a lot of starting points for your plot, some ideas, and some ways to twist the story as you're going along. And if the idea that you've come up with is not enough for a book, that's okay. You will have another idea. I guarantee it. Put that one aside. Maybe write it down and put it in one of those folders in your filing cabinet that you'll never open again and come back and come up with another idea. There's plenty of ideas out there and there's only one you to write them into a novel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the other side of the page. Show start your writing.